Next, we'll look at the circuits controlled by relays and logic devices. Starting with our relay. Relays use low current drivers to control high current circuits. We have two different circuits. We've got power contacts. Power contacts are the mechanical electrical contacts, points if you would, that close to energize the circuit. These points are closed by the electromagnetic coils that require current flow to generate the magnetic attraction to close up the power contacts. Two areas can go wrong. One, the power contacts can add unintended resistance. Two, the relays don't energize because they don't have proper current flow, either because of a coil, power problem, or excessive resistance someplace. The other device we're going to look at are logic controls. They're solid state drivers that use low current control signals to control higher current devices. We're going to go to one of our actual vehicle diagrams, which uses both relays and field effect transistor logic devices. Let's start with our relay. We're going to be looking at the interior lamps and the luggage compartment lamp. What we have here, when we start looking at our relay there, where our voltmeter is connected, is battery direct B+. Battery direct B+, means it will be battery voltage anytime. It's always hot. We're supplying the power contacts and the coil. Now, this is a little bit unusual. We don't do that that often. You'll see other examples where the power contacts get their source from one place and the coil gets it from a different place. But it doesn't matter. Both of them are here. For this to work, we must have B+. First check we'd make if we think there's something wrong is look for this B+. Let's see what else we have. On the coil, we've got ground-activated coil. Ground-activated because the other side is always B+, and for any device to, to power up or to energize, we must have ground to activate it. We even have some voltage measurements. Let's talk about this ground activation signal. The ground circuit is going to be at B+, when ground is open, and we open the ground to de-energize the relay, to turn off the interior lamps and the luggage compartment lamps. If we want to energize the battery saver relay and turn these on, we have under one volt applied. That means we supplied ground. We have under a volt at the bottom of the coil, battery voltage at the top. That will give us current flow, which will close the relay contacts. Now, not all relays are going to use low side driver. Where we supply ground, it's called a low side driver. Some systems are going to use a high side driver. This is an example of a GM fuel pump. This relay is switched B plus from inside the PCM. It's going to supply B plus, which is going to supply current flow to the coil. The coil is always grounded. That's going to energize the blue circuit over there, closing the relays for the fuel pump and starting the fuel pump in this particular example. But let's go back to our diagram, spend some more time talking about measuring the voltages. If we want to make sure this thing is going to work, we're going to measure the voltage to make sure we got hot B plus coming into the relay. It's, that is going to have to be there if we're going to light the lamps. That's our source of power. We can use two ways to do it. One is to come through this field effect transistor, or FET, to connect it in. And in that particular case, we're going to be going down here to the terminal that's hooked to position number one which is the off position for the interior lamps. Now, the first question you might want to ask me is why would we be turning the lamps on when the switch is off? Let me say that again. Why would we be turning the interior lamps on when the interior lamp switch is in the off position? Well, stop and think about the last time you got in a vehicle. Any modern vehicle to get into, you walk up with the Achilles interest system. When you press your button to unlock the doors, automatically the computer turns on the interior lights. This is that circuit. This is the logic that turns this lamp on. Now remember, this lamp stays on for quite a few seconds as you're entering the car, usually around 30 seconds, giving you time to get in, close the door, find your key, put in the ignition before it slowly dims the lamps down. When you get out of the car, it turns the lights off in just a few seconds. All of that logic comes from the logic up there feeding the, fe the field effect transistor, the FET. It's going to turn it on. It's going to supply power. 
We're going to come back to this circuit in a little while when we talk about troubleshooting, but I want you to understand how this works. On the other side, when we're in position two, the lights are powered by F25, a B-plus fuse, an entirely different circuit. We're going to talk about looking at different circuits later on and about the amount of information we can gain from looking at how things work driven by two different sources. So if we're in position two, where the interior lamps is on, we're going to go up here and use this circuit to get the voltage. It's going to go down here, and it's going to turn the lamps on. Now, one thing to note, one of the things we're going to talk to you about is when we have dual functions like this, can you use these dual functions to identify possible places to go? One of the things we want to talk to you about is making measurements in these wiring harnesses is difficult and time-consuming. We don't want to waste any effort that we don't have to use to identify a problem. What we'd like to do is to identify possible areas for a problem before we ever even open up the wiring harness, take out our voltmeter, and start testing. Let's see what we could do. In this circuit, like we've got right now, if the luggage compartment lamp will light, we know that we have B-plus coming down this circuit, which tells us if that splice go is good at S303, we should have B-plus applied to pin 2 or position 2 of our interior lamp switch. And we also know if the interior light lights when we press our unlock key, we could light it in position 1, that that blue ground must be good because it was using that same ground to light the lights when we unlocked it. Let me say that again. When we hit our unlock key and our interior lamps came on in position 1, we used this blue ground to turn those lights on. Now that we've tried turning the switch on and we can't get it to light, we're saying, wow, can we light the luggage compartment lamp? Yes or no? Yes, we can. Okay, we go over, we open the luggage compartment, the lamp lights. That tells us we have B+, plus all the way down to slice, splice S303. Now we can simply go in. We're going to have to find a place to test. Let's see if we get B+, plus to our interior lamp switch, terminal number 3 on the connector. If there's B+, plus there, we have a bad number 2 switch position. But I didn't pick up my voltmeter until the very last step. I didn't waste time going and prying things apart. And that's not to say I can't have splice 303 go bad and I have to go find the splice. That's going to happen sometimes. But at least at that point, I would have had a situation where I did not have power at pin 3, but I could light the luggage compartment lamp when I opened the, the trunk. Then I would have known that I had the circuit going straight down, but the right branch of that parallel circuit is bad. So it gets us back to talking about these circuits. Now let's talk about this battery saver. It's going to energize this. Why would the battery saver be energizing it? We're going to go into the interior lamps and put it in the on position. The battery saver lamp will be energized until it thinks it has on, had it on long enough with the ignition off. It's going to turn them off to save the battery. So the logic there is going to be the battery saver will save us from the interior lamp being left on. It will not save us if the field effect transistor goes defective, shorts out, and turns them on all the time in position one because it can't be interrupted. This is we're talking about understanding how all this works and gleaming as much information as you can from a diagram. So it's going to turn the lamps off only if we're in position number two. The rest of the time, it's out of the circuit. Let's talk about voltage drops. If we think we've got a problem, like we said, we've got a lamp that won't turn on. We could measure the voltage drop from pin three back up to our fuse. If it's battery voltage, we have an open circuit somewhere in between there. Now, we did that because it's pretty easy to do. Like we said, we're going to be doing things that are easy. We expect most of the voltage to be dropped by the lamps, which is normal situation. One of the things we've got to be careful of is one of the common circuits to both of these is ground. And this ground is going to go back to battery negative. Now, if we have a bad ground at battery negative, not only would these lamps be working badly, not properly, too dim, whatever the kitchen situation may be, but all the lamps are going to be doing the same thing. So we'd have all lamps having a problem if it was back at the battery negative. But we could have a ground problem for this specific ground we're using right here, ground 204. If ground 204 
isn't making good contact, then neither the FET nor the relay would give us full illumination or interior lamps. However, the luggage compartment using a different ground would still light and operate normally. Let me say that again. If we had a problem with ground 204, which is utilized by position 1 and position 2 of the interior lamp switch, that's going to be affecting both of them. We couldn't get full intensity with the interior lamps powered up by the FET with the unlock switch, nor could we get it when we tried to go to position 2 and use the battery saver relay to light the lamps. You would say, ha, it's a common problem to both of them. Look at the lamps, look at the switch, look at the ground. Got an idea what we're trying to do with voltage drops now? We're going to be talking more about them. You have to understand circuit details. You have to look at how these things work, how we have these splits and what it means to have a split, how we have voltage going in two different places. And if we have voltage normal in one half of it, it should be in the other half if the splice where they split is normal and good. You have to understand that some of these circuits are going to drive power from different ways to do things. This is a series path. Our FETs in series. Remember, I told you one of the things we're going to do is dim this light down when we're done. That's slowly going to increase resistance in the FET to slowly dim the light down. That's the normal operation of this circuit. So we have the battery saver energizing in position two. We have the FET energizing in position one. We're going to look at the differences between these two to identify common areas and to minimize the number of places we're going to have to test. We're going to show you this with other diagrams, how you look at multiple plot spots to identify common areas that have to be normal when you have normal performance. Next, we're going to spend some time looking at series and parallel circuits and studying the current flow. We need to tie current and voltage drops together now to do the next part of our circuit analysis.